this question and it says a pole tilts towards the sun at an eight degree angle from the vertical. Okay, so let's say we've got our uh, Mr. Sun right up here. I can draw a sun. Yay. Okay, um, we have a pole. I'm not artistic, okay? Cool, thanks. It is tilting eight degrees from the vertical. Now I'm going to exaggerate this because this is a little bit more than eight degrees. Okay? But here's our pole, here's vertical, it is 8 degrees from vertical, vertical making a right angle with the ground. It casts a 22 foot shadow, so here's our 22 foot shadow, it extends to this point. Okay, the angle of elevation from the tip of the shadow to the top of the pole so we've got a line going here from the tip of the shadow to the top of the pole. That angle of elevation is 43 degrees. How tall is the pole? So this is what we're asking for, H right here. Okay, we have the angle across from that height that we're looking for. So that's part of our law of signs. The sine of 43 degrees over h and the other side that we know is 22 do we have the angle across from that 22 feet no we have the angle that is adjacent to that but we do not have the angle that is across from the 22 feet so let's look at our big triangle right here this is 43 degrees what's the measure of this angle right here 90. 98. The whole angle right there is 98. So we need to subtract those from 180 to get our top angle there. 180 minus 98 minus 43, 39. Why did you put an H right there? Why did I put an H there? Because yeah. that's what we're looking for. We want to know how tall is the pole. So that's 39 degrees. So H is equal to 22 sine of 43 degrees over the sine of 39 degrees. So this is an application problem. We want the exact value. So we crunch the numbers. 22 sine 43 divided by the sine of 39. We get that it is approximately 23.842 feet tall. Okay. All right. Okay, the ambiguous case. When we have two sides and an angle, and yes, I purposefully put them in that order. Why? Uh -huh. Funny. Um, when we have two sides and an angle, there are actually three possibilities when you're given two sides and an angle uh, with the law of sides. You may have one solution, you may have no solution, or you may have two possible triangles. Okay, we're going to look at those individually. This first case is one solution. Okay, we are told that side A is 22 inches, side B is 12 inches, and angle A is 42 degrees. So, um, let's go ahead and keep drawing a picture because it can't hurt. Okay, uh, let's say this is angle A, B, nope, I don't want to there because B is supposed to be smaller, B and C. Okay, angle A is 42 degrees, side A is 22, side B is 12. Okay, so tell me right now, is angle B going to be bigger or smaller than 42 degrees? Smaller. Smaller, because side B is smaller than side A. So let's set up the law of sines. The sine of 42 degrees over 22 is equal to the sine of, this time we're looking for the angle, so the sine of B over 12. So when we cross multiply, 
we get 12 sine of 42 degrees divided by 22 is equal to the sine of B. You cross multiply and divide, that's what you get. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, um, when we type in what's on the left side there, we're not actually going to get the answer. We get the sine of B. So, um, how, do we, how do we solve for an angle? Inverse trig, okay? Inverse trig. So, we're going to do sine inverse of 12 sine of 42 degrees over 22 is equal to B. You could, but I like to use the exact answer. So if you do do it in two pieces, then this is what you need to do. Sine of 12 sine of 42 over 22, press enter, and then do second sine, that does your inverse, second negative. Um, or second, well, if you do second enter, it'll overwrite what you just typed in. So do second negative, and it'll plug the answer in there. So that gives us that angle B is 21.406 degrees is angle B. Okay, and then we can subtract that and 42 from 180. So we get 116.594. For angle C, and then we have to do the law of sines one more time to find side C. But again, use what you were given in case you made a mistake in calculating something, so I'm going to use the given information about side A. So 22 sine of the answer, and I also do that as much as possible, keep my answer rolling um, so I don't have to round. So side C is approximately 29.4. Okay, now this is the case where we only have one possibility. Um, and the reason is, is because we were finding um, the smaller angle. We were finding a smaller angle than uh, the side and angle we were getting the information for. Okay, If side B had been something like 32, then we could have possibly had more than one triangle. Okay, We could have possibly had more than one triangle. Um, here's the next example. Okay. Show that there is no triangle for which side A can be 15, side B can be 25, and angle A can be 85 degrees. So we're going to set up the law of sines. Sine of 85 over 15 is equal to the sine of B over 25. So 25 sine of 85 divided by 15 gives us 1.66 is uh, approximately the sine of B. Now if you did what we just did and you did the inverse, look at what happens. It gives you that domain error. Why would it give us that domain error? What about it's bigger than one. The sine of an angle is bigger than one. That's not possible. Okay, the sine of an angle cannot be bigger than one. Sine of B cannot be greater than one. So, I mean, and they told us that there was no triangle. So we were just showing that there was no triangle. And this is why. Okay, this is why. We're in a real awkward spot with college.